CNC Music Factory was a huge dance group that rose to fame in the late 90s. They're the newest phenomenon in the era of polished phenomenons coming and going, and they would suffer the same exact fate. They had a very polished pop star look and catchy dance music that would be echoed for generations to come, even after the infamy they obtained that would lead to their demise. The group was made by David Cole and Robert Clivelet, and they attained minimal notoriety in their earlier years, but in the late 1990 they would reach the international stage with the release of their album Gonna Make You Sweat, which features the classic hit Gonna Make You Sweat Everybody Dance Now, which topped the charts in numerous countries and is still being played at clubs, sports games, and public events today and is regarded as one of the biggest and most recognizable dance songs of all time. The album's other singles did amazingly well too, topping the dance charts with the album itself selling over 5 million copies in the United States alone. It saw the group take on new commercial heights, but the success or the group itself wasn't at all what it was cracked up to be. In the era of Milli Vanilli, and the classic lip syncing scandal, they were another product of this era. The vocals on Everybody Dance Now belonged to famed singer Martha Wash, who had recorded a demo for the song, which later saw great success. But they tried to erase her into obscurity from the group initially. They deemed Martha Wash unmarketable because she was bigger in size, and they found a petite model-esque woman to replace her. That woman went by the name of Zelma Davis, who was a singer and did in fact sing on the album, but not this particular song, which they made her appear as if she did. In the music video, it depicts her lip syncing to Marsha's voice, and even in live performances and on the credits, it listed Zelma instead of Wash. Wash initially wasn't even credited on the album. However, she didn't take this lightly and took matter into her own hands. According to Rolling Stone, who also named Wash the most famous unknown singer, in July of 1990, the singer filed her first lawsuit against Clivelet, Cole, and Seduction's record label A&M Records for unauthorized use of her voice. The losses all took place and ended in different matters, but Martha won all of them. Furthermore, before her court case, it was revealed that she had allegedly received less than $1,000 for a contribution to the hit song. Wash sued Clivelet and Cole again, along with CNC's record label CBS Sony, for $500,000 for fraud, deceptive packaging, and commercial appropriation. It was false advertising, says Wash, and the public needed to know about that. She eventually won the case, and they settled out of court for an amount that is unknown. But her voice's popularity hadn't stopped there. Prior to CNC Music Factory, Martha was a very successful singer in her own right, and one half of the Weather Girls who had the massive hit It's Raining Man, which has been referenced in pop culture and covered many times. However, after CNC Music Factory, her voice was at the forefront of many lawsuits. It's almost like she was the go-to singer for entertainers who didn't sing their own songs. There was another successful group named Seduction who used Martha's voice on their sleeper hit, You're My One and Only True Love. And as you can guess, she was once again uncredited on the song, so she sued and won. Martha was a big demo singer, but the label seemed as if they couldn't get enough of her version of the songs and left her vocals on the track. There was another big group named Black Box who had international hits and sold hundreds of thousands of records, in which Martha did majority of the singing on their debut album Dreamland which instead saw Kentrin Quinnall, a model being the face of the group. They used her to lip sync in music videos, live performances, the whole nine yards. I think it goes without saying, Martha once again sued and won and got her credit on the album. As a result of her lawsuits, it was made mandatory that record companies give the proper credit for all albums and music videos. Martha in this way became an unsung hero being defiant of the music business's sketchy ways. You remember Rob and Fab. And the best new artist is Millie Vanilli. The music industry awarded them a Grammy last year for best new artist, only to take it away when their producer admitted Rob and Fab were the faces of Millie Vanilli, but not the voices. Gonna Make You Sweat by CNC Music Factory is number one on the Billboard chart. It's also the center of a controversy. For what you see may not be what you hear. What you see is model Zelma Davis. But what you hear is Martha Wash's voice. The 
vocals that I did are my vocals, but they have someone else uh, going out lip syncing or being shown in a video as the one that's actually saying it. And that's the part that makes me mad. That's not the only thing that made Martha mad. She also alleges in a lawsuit she was called by the producers, David Cole and Robert Clavillis, to record background vocals. It seems like the work that I did was, instead of in the background, pushed forward to the front. Her attorney, Stephen Ames Brown, says she was paid less than $1,000 for the recording. Martha Walsh is suing Clavillis, Cole, and CBS Sony Music for a half million dollars. Even if you got a performer's permission to put one person's voice in another person's body, you do not have the permission of the American public to not be lied to. It's a hurtful thing. And um, it's something that I'm dealing with now. Producers Clavillis and Cole and CBS declined requests for interviews, but we did catch up with lead C&C vocalist rapper Freedom Williams backstage at the Hollywood Palladium. Originally, Martha was asked to be in the music factory, but I think Martha being in the business so long, 15 years, 10, 15 years, especially, didn't want to go into a dance January like this, so she chose really not to go on the road with us, which is the reason why we hired them in the first place, because we didn't have a, a singer to travel on the road. I was not asked to be a member of the group. I was not asked to travel with them, anything like that. Martha is no stranger to producers Clavillis and Cole or to lawsuits. When Martha started out as a weather girl, she hit big with this one. David Cole was her pianist and musical director. When Martha went solo, she recorded Everybody, Everybody in 1989 as part of the Black Box recording. It was released on RCA. Another performer, Katrine Quinnell, got credit for her work. Martha sued RCA, and the case was settled. And when you hold it in your arms. She did My One and Only True Love for Clavillas and Cole on A&M. Another woman was credited for the work Martha claimed she did. Again, she sued. Settlement negotiations are underway. If you're on the heavy side, somehow or another, the people who do market marketing research feel that if you're thin, a size four, size six, if you will, you sell better, regardless of how you sound. I tell you this, and I don't mean to be rude, harsh, callous, and malign, or vilifying, but I'd rather look at them on stage. Mike Green is president of the National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences, NARIS, the organization that awards artists their Grammys. Maybe there should be a waiver that says, I understand that I'm being paid as a contract singer and that my the use of my performance uh, may be put into conjunction with different visuals. Nile Rodgers is one of the most respected producers in the music business. He recently finished an album with the late Stevie Ray Vaughan and his brother Jimmy called Family Style. He explains how laws haven't caught up with technology. So now what I've done is I've just sampled um, the uh, live performance, if you will, of the Clavillis and Cole CD. So now what I'm going to do is I have that that information living in this computer here. Now this is the way the original recording goes. But I could always go. And do whatever I want with this. So you can now you can see that I can manipulate what they've just done and go off and take my take this sample and go make my own dance record out of theirs. This is my livelihood. This is my living. This is my career. This is my life. And I'm trying to protect mine also. Let the public make up their mind as to who's telling the truth. She went on to release her own solo work and even team up with CNC Music Factory again for their second album, Anything Goes, on the song Do You Wanna Get Funky, in which she even appeared in the music video this time around. After the success of this album, one of their members, David Cole, died of AIDS. 
They still continued on as a group and achieved notoriety within dance music, but never quite reattained their commercial appeal. They've gone on a few tours since then in recent history, and is still considered one of the biggest dance artists of all time. But at that time, it was like, you did not see large women in front of you on TV, not really doing real disco music at the time. You know, you really didn't right. see that. Right. So we were, I guess you could say, we were kind of like trailblazers because yeah. even though we were considered novelty acts, well, yeah, we could still sing. Yeah. You know, we could still mm -hmm. get an audience and had uh, fans and everything. And as the, the, the years went on, I had to kind of stop and think about it myself because at that time, again, you didn't mm -hmm. see large women that were out in the front right. or even really doing background that much. Yep, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. Visually, mm -hmm. visually. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you remember the mamas and the papas. Mama right. Cass. Mama Cass was like, you know, the largest woman that you saw that was out there in the front in a right. group. Doing, uh, doing their thing, you know. So when we came along, it was like, okay, yeah, they're, you know, they're good uh, vocally, but again, you know, how do we market them? How do we get the the audience to buy what they're selling visually? You know, all these decades later, now you see the big girls out there. I was just, I was watching Lizzo uh, the other night uh, at the uh, awesome. MTV MTV and Movie Awards and stuff. And she was just, hey, she was doing her thing. Mm -hmm. She was awesome. really doing her thing. And, and, and the audience, the audience just loves her. And I think it's great. You know, we, we have to be represented as well as everybody else, you know. But I think the most important thing behind CNC Music Factory's story is not their success, commercial dance pop hits, or even the millions of records they sold, but the will and determination of Martha Wash who continued to fight for what was rightfully hers and prevailed.